Hi, in today's video, we are going to study about artificial neural network. We will start with the basic structure of neuron. We will see different kind of activation function. And finally, the basic or the scratch model of a neuron with mucklodge pitts model. So let us start with definition of artificial neural network. So here, artificial neural networks are uh, actually inspired by human brain. These are nothing but an algorithm which try to mimic or which try to replicate the working of your brain. They are massively parallel and distributed system which basically consists of simple neurons which are nothing but a simplest processing unit. Now there are synaptic connections which strengths among the neurons which are used to store and acquire the knowledge. This knowledge is acquired by the network from its environment through something called as a learning process. ANN has wide range of use case varieties such as in it is used in, in pattern recognition methods, in function approximation and in associative memory use cases. So here is the basic diagram of a, a human brain where we have something called as dendrites, we have synapses, we have axons and synapses, we have some uh, threads or some nerves which are connecting these synapses and these synapses are nothing but a basic neuron or a single processing unit. Okay, so we are going to replicate this functioning of a human brain into a computer program is nothing but our artificial neural network. So in what cases we are going to use neural networks or simply ANN. Uh, so when input is very high dimensional and discrete or very raw valued, in that case we can go with neural networks or an ANN. Output is very discrete or real valued, output is vector, Possibly there is noisy data, our target function is not known, when human reliability of result is not important, in all those cases we can go with neural networks. Now when we are saying neural network, it is a basic a network of neuron. Now what is the basic structure of neuron or how neuron looks like? So neuron is basically made up of three major components. First one is synaptic weights. Second one is summation junction and third one is activation function. Now synaptic weights are nothing but the weights given to some input signals. Input signals are nothing but numerous input values that are coming into the system. So if we have uh, n inputs, we can represent each input as x1, x2, x3 up to xn. Now each input is given with some weight which is nothing but it synaptic weight represented by W of i. So any signal xi which is a form of input is assigned with i synapses with the weight W i. The weight of any weight here can be positive or negative. It can be discrete or it can be real. It is basically treated or adjusted using some iterative method. Any weight which is having a positive value will give it as an extraordinary effect while any synaptic weight which is a negative will give it an inhibitory effect on an output. So whatever output we get out of all this is given to a single node called as summation junction. At this summation junction all weights are multiplied with their respective input and their final summation is being produced. We can call this summation junction as or that can be written as y sum which is given as summation over 1 to n input wi into xi where wi is nothing but weight of a synapse and xi nothing but an input i. So summation junction for an input signal is weighted by the respective synaptic weight. Since it is linear in nature, then its weight and input signals are simply multiplied and they are expressed as a sum of series of all these terms. Now, at the, in some of the cases, you will see some special kind of input to this summation junction.
Now this special input comes to this summation junction and that would be called as bias B. So inputs are always ranging from 1 to N but in some special cases there is something called as a bias and this bias can also be written as dub x0 which is always is equal to 1 and some weight wi is being given in this case or I would say w0 so in this case my y sum will be written as b plus that is nothing but bias plus summation over 1 to n input wi into xi weight of a synapse i into input of synapse i and after that we have finally something called as an activation function simply an activation function sometime also called as squashing function which generates an output signal based upon y sum which is an input to this particular block so whenever uh, there are different threshold values or different activation functions that can be used as in this particular state. Let us study few of them. Very first activation function is an identity function. An identity function is an activation function of an input layer. So whatever the input comes in will be the output. So for example input to activation function is y sum. So I would say y sum itself is a function of x which is x itself okay. So whatever the output of uh, th activation function is y out. So I would say my y out is y sum itself. So this is the simplest kind of function which is nothing but put produces output same as input which is having no use. Now second type of function is called as a step function which is a commonly used activation function. Now this step function if depicted over a two dimensional line x and y this step function produces either y value as 1 or it reduces 0. So your y out value either can be 1 or 0 depending upon its x value. Now this x is nothing but function of y sum. So whatever y summation value is that, according to that, we will get a value output y1 or z. So for any y sum value which is positive, which is greater than or is equal to 0, we will get output 1. For any negative value of y sum that is x less than 0, we will always get y value 0. So this is a kind of step function. Next one is a threshold function, which is a slight variation of a step function. Now we all know that step function gives value 1 for all positive values. Instead of that we will have a step at some threshold theta. So any x value which is having greater than theta value we will get 1 output. For any x value which is lesser than theta we will get 0 as an output. So for any value which is lesser than theta we will have output as 0 this value. And for any value which is greater than or larger or equals to this theta, we will have value as 1 output. So this is something called as threshold. This is widely used one of the function. Another popular function is a ReLU function, which is stands for ReLU stands for rectified linear unit function. Now this is one of the popular function uh, which is used in nowadays for deep learning. Now here for any positive value of x, x will be output and for any negative value of x, 0 will be output. So it is having a value or the case like this. Okay, this is my 0 comma 0. So at x is equals to 0 or x is equal to lesser any x negative value, we will get output 0. For any value which is greater than x0 or any positive value our output will be x itself. So this means f of x is 0, x is less than 0, then f of x is equal to x when x is above or equals to 0. It is also uh, you should notice that this function is differentiable only except at a point x is equal to 0. Only at this point it is not differentiable otherwise you can take uh, d by dx of a given function that is nothing but differentiation. Another kind of function is a sigmoid function. A sigmoid function is another widely used activation function in a neural network.
uh, how it basically works. Sigmoid function gives an output between 0 to 1 only. Any value between 0 to 1, hence it gives a real value. So it has a shape of this S type curve and this S type curve is being given by y out is equal to f of x 1 divided by 1 plus e raised to minus kx. Now this value of k will give us decide at what value of x 0.5 will be produced. Say for example if k value is 1 at 0 we will get 0.5 value. For f different different values of k, we will be getting different different value 0.5 at different different locations. So for example, if k's values is modified, we will get same type of curve but at some different location. So at this stage, we will get 0.5 at some different location. Say for example, at minus 1, say for example. Or if we adjust the value of k, then we will get same location, same type of curve at some other location. Say for example, at x is equal to 2, we get 0.5 value. Say for example. So this is what your sigmoid function is look like. Now another variation of uh, sigmoid function or simply called as binary sigmoid function because it generates an output between 0 and 1 only. Then we have something called as bipolar sigmoid function or simply hyperbolic tangent function. So basically hyperbolic tangent function and bipolar sigmoid function is one of the same thing which produces an output between which produces an output between 1 to minus 1. Since you can see it is having same sign as or same shape of a curve as of our sigmoid function. The only thing is that instead of producing values between 0 to 1, it produces value between 1 to minus 1. And uh, it is being defined as so y out which is, is equal to f of x which is, is equal to e raised to x minus e raised to minus x divide by e raised to x plus e raised to minus x. We can rewrite this hyperbole, uh, hypertangent function as 1 minus e raised to minus kx divided by 1 plus e raised to minus kx. Uh, this is nothing but another way of representation of hyperbolic tangent function. So basically this kind of hyperbolic tangent function is used in by back propagation kind of neural network. In later of slides, I will be discussing what do we mean by backpropagation network. Let us move ahead and look into the basic or the initial neuron model of McClodge Pitts model. So, this is the oldest time of model, or I would say this is the first model of a neural network which represents a particular neuron. Now, this ANN has two types of input, excitatory and inhibitory. Excitatory inputs will give positive weights or positive magnitude to an input, whereas inhibitory weights will give negative weights to an input. So, magnitude will be negative in this case. So, inputs of McClodge Pitts model will be either 0 or 1. That is nothing but a binary. And uh, we use threshold function as our activation function. Remember threshold function is having this step size but it is giving input at some theta threshold. Okay, so after that only we will get one output otherwise we will get always zero as an output. So that is nothing but our threshold function as in activation and summation junction is very simple. Summation of xi wi and our output signal y out is only 1 when our y sum that this value is greater than or equal to some threshold theta. Otherwise, we will get an output 0. So, let us see what kind of problem this McClodge Pitts model solves. So, when we have to design a problem like logical operation, say for example, there is a person John who carries an umbrella in one of the two cases, if there is a day which is rainy or a day which is very sunny or a day where there are both conditions. The first scenario says that uh, when there is a day where it is not rainy and neither it is sunny. Uh, in that case, John should not carry an umbrella. And second case, when it is not raining, 
but this day is very sunny so in that case john will carry an umbrella third case when it is raining but it is not sunny obviously john will carry an umbrella and the fourth case obvious when there is a rainy as well as there is a sunny day so in that case also john should carry an umbrella so we have to analyze the situation using mcloth's pit model and there are only two conditions x1 that is whether it is raining or not x2 whether the day is sunny or not so according to this we will prepare one truth table of input x1 and x2 uh, condition of occurrence of a particular situation is represented by 1 otherwise 0 so there are in total four situations from 1 to 4 and value of x and 0 can be 0 1 or 1 0 1 1 respectively and if i will carry out the sum of these if i consider weights of both these as 1 so 0 multiplied with 1 plus 0 multiplied with 1 will ultimately zero again weights are 1 so 0 multiplied with 1 is 0 plus 1 is multiplied with 1 the sum will be produced as 1 and likewise at the end sum will be 2 and 1 respectively i want y out is the condition at will john should carry an umbrella so john should carry an umbrella in case 2 3 and 4 that means my threshold function should activate or give me one output when theta is equal to 1 that means at sum is equal to 1 at that location my output will be 1 otherwise output should be 0 so that has to be get decided so we can use these two weights x1 and x2 both weights are set to 1 and threshold function is set at theta is equal to 1 also so neural network model would look like this we have x1 and x2 which is nothing but a parameter of rainy and sunny as an input for binary weights of these two will be always 1 and 1 that is nothing but positive weights and summation junction will multiply input with weights and generates y sum and here we have said theta is equal to 1 whatever the y sum value is it will be activate our function at theta is equal to 1 so whenever the sum is greater than or is equal to 1 we will get output as 1 so y sum is nothing but we have set of two inputs so summation will start from 1 go up to 3 to wi into xi and y out is a function of y sum we will get y output in case of x is greater than or is equal to 1 otherwise we will get zero as in out so it is concluded that the situation where y out is 1 john needs to carry out an umbrella hence he will need to carry an umbrella in scenario 2 3 and 4 so using mcloth spitz model we can implement basically gates such as and gate or gate and not gate so this is all for today thank you everyone for watching this video this is munira topia signing